Hey there guys, welcome to the meat shop. Thanks for clicking on. This video is part of a special video series inspired by you guys. I've been asked before for a recipe or sausage book, which I don't have. So I thought I would share my favorite book with you, which is Home Production of Quality Meats and Sausage by Stanley and Adam Marinsky. It is my favorite book. I think it's got great information in there for beginners and experts alike. And uh, to celebrate my favorite book, I reached out to Stanley Marinsky and he gave me permission to do Marinsky March. So we're gonna do a recipe out of this book every day of March. And all the recipes and all the processes are right out of the book, which will be in the link below. That is a link to the book will be in the description down below. So without any further ado, let's get into Marinsky March. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another episode of Marinsky March. Today in Marinsky March, we're making a world famous sausage. I thought I'd better throw this one in there. It is bologna, bologna. <laughs> Reading from the book, page 290 out of home production of quality meats and sausage. Bologna and Frankfurter are smoked and cooked emulsified sausages, which are similar. Many producers use the same formula and processing steps for both sausages. The main difference is the size and casing as bologna is much bigger sausage. It is an American equivalent of the Italian mortadella with no visible pieces of fat. So it's all fine ground emulsification. And that's what we're making today. Bologna, page 290. This one's got a pork and beef split. So I got that all prepped up here. I'm making a three kilogram batch, which is six and a half or seven pounds. And uh, there's our, our meat mix split there, guys. So I got some lean pork. I trimmed all the fat off of the pork and beef there. It says to keep it separate. And we got the lean beef over here. So that's the key to an emulsification. Gonna grind them up very fine and then keep the fat separate so the fat doesn't end up smearing on you. So I got my spices mixed up ahead of time. I got water here ready to go. I got a big bologna casing. Uh, we're gonna do uh, I don't have any beef bungs, so I'm gonna use a synthetic big red bologna casing to stuff these into. It's smoke permeable, so that's what it's gonna end up in. But the first step is to grind meats through a 3 16th plate, five millimeter, keep lean meats separate from fat trimmings, refreeze, grind again and again until you're at a three millimeter plate. So I'm gonna fire them through this larger diameter plate here for the first grind, just the lean meats, combining pork and beef. And they just came out of the freezer, guys. These are very cold currently. Most of them are just about froze, half froze at the very least. Then I'll do the fat separate. All right, first grind, lean meats. Make sure that's good and snug, snug. Sander through. So for this one, guys, it says you can just take beef trimming. So if you guys have some trimmings off the brisket and you can separate some lean meat from the fat. I'm thinking for a fat ratio in the end here, you probably want anywhere from 20 to 30%. Doesn't say in the book, but uh, with a fine sausage, you can kind of hide that fat in there. And uh, when you grind it so fine, there's more surface area, so you get more protein extraction. So that fat should bind to your sausage. So you're not gonna lose it in the smoke step is what I'm getting at when you're bringing the heat up. Because it's very fine, it's well attached. Pick some beef. Beef trim, that's kind of 70, 30, 80, 20, as well as pork trim. So you could use shoulders or some lean beef with a combination of brisket fat you've been saving or something like that. There's the first grind on the lean meat. It's gonna spin it around and send our fat through there. Then I'm gonna pop it back into the freezer. All right guys, so there's just the first coarse grind. I gotta kind of spread out on the sheet because I'm gonna pop this back in my walk-in freezer. Uh, for kind of 15, 20 minutes till it gets firm again. Then I'm gonna run it through my fine plate. All right, just pulled it out of the freezer. Nice and frosty hard. So we'll run it through our fine plate this time. And then one more time after that. Nice big frozen chunks as you can see. That'll also help it get through the finer plate quicker. If your uh, ground is warm, it's, you kind of got to mush it through the plate. And that's not the texture we're shooting for. Yeah, when it's nice and froze like that, guys, it goes through so much easier. 
Ooh, might be a little, almost too froze, making the old grinder snort. All right, that's the last of the lean through there. Starting to look a little bit more like emulsified texture. I'll run that fat through as well. Here comes the fat. All right, fat's nice and quick, not too much of it. I'm going to pop it back in the freezer and do that one last time. All right, so another 10 minutes went by here. They didn't take as long to get uh, nice and hard this time because they're already pretty cold and there's maybe more surface area or something like that. So we're going to send it through the final time here, guys. And uh, I'll bring you in to show you what the, the final grind looks like. All right, final grind on the lean coming up. Should go through pretty nice and easy because it still froze. Starting to see all the particles are starting to look like one. There's no little specks of fat in there that you can see. So that's good. It's getting pretty close to an emulsification. I think if you really wanted to, you could run this through the food processor if you wanted a really super fine texture. Or if you have a bowl cutter at home, you could run it through that as well. You guys can see as it's coming out of the grinder, it's already really stringy, like it's already almost got its own protein extraction. That's from all that surface area and, and it is very cold. Okay, there's the end of our fine grinding of the lean meat. There you go guys, That's we're going to put some seasonings on this soon and turn it into bologna. But next we have to run our fat through. Alright, finish the fat off here quick. There's the end of our creamy fat. Also looks good. Time to mix our spices and water. All right, there's our fine grinding completed. Now we're going to mix lean beef with all ingredients, adding a third cold water, add lean pork, add a third cold water. I ground the pork and the beef together. So we're just gonna do that step together. Uh, so I'm gonna add the ingredients and two thirds of the cold water. So I got the cold water measured out here. I have our Lovely spices mixed out, a little paprika, all spice, white pepper. Those are kind of the signatures of bologna and hot dogs. So I'm just going to sprinkle that onto our lean meat. I'm going to get our fat out of the way. Because you don't want to be mixing the fat with this, because otherwise the fat, it heats up quicker and it will kind of smear and can affect your bind if your fat is too hot. So I'm just going to hang out here, guys. Get these spices distributed all the way through this. Trickle a little bit of water in, mix, trickle a little bit of water in, mix. Then when this stuff's looking really homogenized, I will add the fat and mix that in at last. A little bit of water. Mix. We got this super sticky. Super sticky lean meat. So now I'm going to add the fat and the last third of the water. Finish mixing, then we're on to the stuffing step. Pulling the cotton gloves off, it's so sticky. I'm gonna keep mixing though, because until those little fat guys start to disappear, you can kind of see them popping out. It's gonna take a little bit longer to mix, but you don't wanna mix it until it's warm and it starts to melt. It's still really cold. You can feel it through my cotton gloves, so I can mix for a little bit yet. All right, this is a very sticky ball of meat. I don't think I can get any more protein extraction out of it. You can kind of see the little uh, specks of fat, but maybe they'll kind of render out during the cooking process. I'll get you a little close-up of what it looks like here before we get it stuffed. So there we go, guys. The lean meat is super fine. You can't really see any particulation in the lean meat, but you can see those little things of fat popping out, so they're probably going to show up in the, in the end sausage. I think if you want to get it just a perfect single texture emulsion. You might have to use a food processor or a bowl cutter, but I'm going to get this thrown in the sausage stuffer back there. All right, got it loaded in there. I'm just going to C-clamp my sausage stuffer to the table so it's not sliding around on you. You guys can also use those little sucky tabs that stick to windows and put them under the feet. But uh, grab our big sausage casing. So this is a plastic casing. I'm pretty sure this one's smoke permeable. It's got the grains in it. But if uh, if not, you guys can use these. 
Here, these are fibrous casings for smoking. These ones are definitely smoke permeable. This guy here is a synthetic plastic that's smoke permeable. I've smoked in them before and the smoke flavor definitely comes through still. So I'm gonna use that today. Make it look kind of like a big authentic one from the grocery store. So you slide her down. I just pop it in water for a little bit just so it slides better coming off the horn. And for this one, you really wanna squeeze really good and tight. Get it nice and full. Cause it's a big casing. All right, there's the end of it. And I'm just gonna push the last little bit out of the horn. So how I get the last little bit out of the horn is I take a horn that's one size smaller, just put one of my plastic vacuum package bags over it. Twist this off here. Okay, and I take the horn inside the other horn. I got a piece of plastic to pull it out on. There you go. Not much left. Oh, there's a little bit in the horn there, but for the most part, it's emptied out. Then you gotta work that last little bit back down. Get the air pockets out. Come closer to you guys. Last little bit I snuck out of the horn. Push down. You don't really gotta worry about breaking these casings. They're really strong. All right. Tight and then give her a couple spins. Tighten it up. I got some butcher twine. If you have those hog clips, you can do that as well. But I just give her a double knot here. One, two. And sometimes with these big ones, I do do a second knot just in case that you do get some expansion and it loosens off your first one. So I'll just do a second knot just a little bit up because I have had these big ones burst before. And you lose all your sausage out the bottom. And all that hard work for nothing is no good. Been a lot of work so far. Lots of grinding, lots of mixing. But there's our little chunk of bologna. And I'm going to pop them in the smokehouse to start drying off. All right, guys, hanging in the smokehouse. Smoke steps are the exact same. We're going to dry them for an hour. We're going to smoke them for two hours. And we're going to cook them. And uh, the dry step is just going to be at room temperature for about an hour here. And I'm going to smoke them at 150 for two hours with hickory. Now I'm going to start to close the dampers, increase the humidity inside the smoke coast so that the temperature comes up, cooks that sausage at about 185 until the internal temperature hits 158. Then we're going to pop them out of there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the beef bologna, bacon sausage, and Krakowska just went off here. So I'm going to have a look, our first look at them here, see how they're doing. Ooh, look at those colors. Those look nice. Yeah, look at that. Nice mahogany color. Krakowska's got some really cool mahogany pork chunks in there. Bacon sausage is looking good. And the bologna. I'm just going to probe the bologna. It's a little larger diameter stuff. So it might not quite be there. It might need some more time yet. 155, 156. So it's okay. We'll take that guy out of there. 157. So I'm just going to take these guys out of the smokehouse pop them in the cold water bath, give them a rinse for a little while, and then hang them in the cooler to cool down overnight. Here they come. We'll just start rinsing them for a couple minutes here, guys. All right, they got a bit of a rinse there, a couple minutes worth anyways. Now I'm just gonna take them, hang them to dry in the cooler, walk-in cooler overnight. All right, I made a couple sausages yesterday, guys. And this one is the one I'm looking forward to trying the most, the bologna. Uh, smoke good, got a little bit of wrinkle on it there, but it still looks pretty dang good. I'll bring it in after it's cold shower there. Ta-da, not too bad. A little bit of wrinkle at the bottom end there where it cooked, but let's peel off our casing and see how our emulsification worked out. All right, Make it off at the top here, off at the bottom. No, oh, not bad. All right, I'm gonna cut it right in the middle. See how it goes. Did you guys have the first look? Huh, does it look good? Well, it does look not bad. The little fat 
units uh, pop out there a little bit, but not too bad for just using the grinder, no food processor. But as I said, the little fat pellets uh, pop out a little bit, but the, the lean stuff in between all looks kind of uniform in texture, so I'm excited to try it. So far, I'm happy. All right, I should put it on the slicer, but it's the end of the day here. I don't want to clean the slicer up, so just cut it as thin as you can. I might have a bologna sandwich for supper tonight. This tastes good. Yeah, and the suspension's pretty good. The protein extraction's pretty good. Mmm. So far, all signs say good. Mmm. Yeah, it's got that nice emulsified sausage texture. The bologna flavors. I like this. I would make this again. I'd make a lot of them again. Yeah, that's great. See, you can make bologna at home with just a meat grinder. How cool is that? So, that wraps up the bologna episode of Marinsky March. Big hit. Everything went well on this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. Take care. Mmm.